So you've chosen your shirts, you've brought them back from the charity shop. Next thing to do, make sure you wash and iron them. Now obviously your finished cushion will depend very much on the size of your shirts. Because I also look for making quilts, the bigger the shirt, the further the fabric will go. So this just happened to be in the colour range I was looking for and it's pretty large. So what I'll do first is cut it out and then decide on a size. So the first thing you want to do, lay it out and you want to button your front up and it does help if you line the buttons up properly. And then by doing that you get the back and the front together and then you can start working out where you want to start cutting. Now I use my big square rulers. If you want, haven't got one of those, it doesn't matter. You just want a long straight edge where you can draw along and then you can cut either using rotary cutter or scissors. So, there we are. That's get that roughly smoothed out. Don't want any big creases in. Now depending on the shirt that you've got you may find that there's some details that you want to keep in. I like to keep the pocket in so I should probably keep that in mind when I'm cutting. So generally speaking I don't do much bigger finished than about a 16 although it's 16 inch square although that's not always the case. If we cut it out first and then you can decide on whether you want a square one or whether you want rectangle. So this will very much depend on what details that you want to keep in. Because I want to keep the pocket in, you want to make sure as well that you're not going to be trying to cut through buttons. So, because I want to keep the pocket in, that's going to limit the width of it for me. So, if you're using a pen and scissors later, um, you want to make draw your lines, make sure it's pinned in place, and then cut it out. You don't want the two sides to slide. So I'm going to use my rotary cutter, but I think at this stage I'm going to remove the sleeves. I just help I need to be fabric scissors. So I just cut into that seam there and then put my scissors through just the one width. I follow that edge. that to one side because I will use that for something else and I will definitely save the buttons. Just remove the other sleeve. There we go. Uh, that just makes it a bit easier for cutting it out. I'm going to cut just underneath the first button on the shirt front. There we 
bag up and that takes the top off. Just that's going to one side, buttons will be coming off that. So that's that. Now just slide that up, keep it. Now I'm then going to take off the side. I am going to because this will be included um, in the seam. I'll trim it down afterwards, but I for this at this stage I'm going to include that enclosed seam there. And then I've got that straight roughly this up. And I'm gonna cut down to the bottom of the shirt. This first cut is all about getting the rough idea final size and shape. Put that to one side. Right, wait, I'm just nine and a half. Making sure that that button band is going to be halfway down, and then cut down that side. I think I must be getting close to the time. I need a new blade. Right, so that can go there. I've got that there. Now, this is where you can decide what, roughly what shape you want your shirt, uh, uh, cushion. Whether you want an oblong one or whether you want a square. I'm going to go for roughly a square. So. Just cut it out square to start with 17 and a half. So 17 and a half. So it's just below that bottom bit we're going to be cutting. Just a bit extra because I don't want to be sewn on the button. And all those bits have been left to one side to be used for something else. So There you go, that's your basic shirt, front and cushion cut out. Uh, turn it over, this is where you're going to decide, you can separate them now once they're cut out. We'll come back and deal with each one separately. So this is your back, which could be either your front or your back of your shirt, depending what you want to do with it. Now, we will square it up after we finished start doing this stage. So I'm going to get some wadding and a backing fabric. And this is where you decide whether you want to quilt this or not. I've done them where I've kept them plain and some that I've quilted. But for this one, because of the fabric, it's a sort of a brushed cotton. I like the feel of it and because of the pattern, it's got a pattern on it, I'm going to leave this one plain. If you've got one that you want to quilt, I'll explain that process to you shortly. But first of all, I'm going to get some wadding and some fabric for the lining. So I'm using cotton wadding. This is just an off cut that I've got left over from. 
quilt that I did. Now you want it to be bigger than the piece that you have cut out for your cushion front. So just lay it out and you want about an inch or two hanging over either side. to one side. Now for the lining I'm just recycling some fabric that I've already got. This is from the curtain lining. Same size as the bottom, roughly, as long as it's bigger than your main fabric. And that's just to give a nice finish inside. So I'm just going to cut that tape off. nice and smooth and it fits in. Now you want to pin it all together. Make sure it's not going to move around. So if you want to quilt it let me know and I'll walk you through the stages step by step. But what I would do, I've got a water erasable pen marker. It just washes out because as soon as I finish making any of these, it goes straight in the machine. Use a straight edge and then I would mark out where I was going to quilt. So if you want straight lines, just rule down or diagonals or even I have done from squares going out. But if that's what you need, let me know and I'll video a demonstration on how to do that. But for me, for this one, I'm going to leave it as it is. So you still want to pin it just to keep all those layers together. And the reason even though I'm not going to quilt it, I put the wadding and the line in. It just gives it a nice comfy feel and finish to it. In the middle. There we go. So that's that one done. So you want to go back then to your front and you want it to be front sides facing. So you can have the back facing up, line that to your edges of your bottom one.
Again, you're going to pin it together, tend to pin on the button band, top and bottom, just to keep that in place. Oh, watch your fingers. And then Tend to keep it in from the edges so it's not going to interfere the sewing. And this is all ready for its first slot of sewing. So just to explain what we're going to do, we're going to sew around, we'll trim it, and then we're going to turn it through the other way and we'll do another line of sewing which will enclose your edges and form a faux pas piping on the outside just to give it a nice finish. So let's go and set the machine up. Alright, so at the machine got my thread set up and this is what I'm going to be using is a walking foot. This just helps with thicker fabrics like this for the top and the bottom to go through at the same time. If you don't have one of these, don't worry, just use your ordinary presser foot, you'll be fine. But these are well worth investing in if you're going to be thinking of doing quite a bit of quilting. Just attach it on. Slips in there and got the hook that goes over that bar there. Just tighten it up. Because I am using or oh, stitching on thicker fabric, I will lengthen the stitch length to make it easier. Now, all you're going to do is go around the square, or the rectangle, depending on what you're doing. Use whatever mark you find convenient as your guide. We will be trimming to a quarter of an inch of the seam once we've finished doing this before turning it through. So press the foot down, needle down, and away we go. Right, that's from where I was winding the bobbin. And just make sure as you come in round the way you're stitching is not going to be over a button. Needles do not like buttons. And make sure your pins are out of the way too because they don't like pins much. I will go right to the end and restart the beginning of the seam rather than pivoting because what I'm going to do is cut those corners off as it to turn it.
just where the flap free button is, button band is, just make sure it goes underneath your foot. done and then what we'll do now is going to trim back towards the stitch and ready for turning through the other way. So take your pins out, don't forget you've got them on two layers, I just for this stage just take out the ones off your top your layer As long as you've got none coming through your seams, you'll be alright. So using your seam as your guide. Quarter of an inch. Have a rotary cutter in a straight uh, ruler, just mark it and then cut it with scissors. Right, those out and repeat that on all four sides. like that. There we go. Now, just with a pair of scissors, just Trim off your corners, just make sure you're not going to cut into the stitching at the corner as well. Just make sure as you turn it through, press your corners out and watch yourself on the, these pins. Just take them out as you go. Make sure they're out. Next stage. Pointer scissors, so uh, just using the square bit just to push that corner out. Okay. 
Okay. Right, let's pull out the rest of these pins. And do your buttons up. Now, what we're going to do is going to be sewing round the outside edges again. So you need to press that down, press it. Sometimes that's enough, but sometimes just find it useful just to take it to the iron and just give that a press to settle it down. So press that and back to the sewing machine. Now, I generally start and finish by the button band and you want a half inch. Just make sure that where you are, you're not going to go over the button. Now this just works out perfectly. So a few reverse stitches and then forward. until we come back, but this time I'm going to get to the corner half an inch from the edge and we're going to pivot and then see underneath where your ridge is from the seam underneath. So just make sure you're on the inside of that. sure that when you get to the button band, make sure it goes under your foot. goes under, over where you started, and a few reverse stitches. Right, out, and just trim the top and bottom threads. And there you have it, there's your shirt. Now into a cushion. And it's going to be a double sided one because you can either use that side 
or if you want a plain side, you've got that side. And where you finish your edges, you've got a faux pipe in, and then open it up. And you see that it's nice and neat on the inside as well. So for cushion pads, if it's square and an average size, it is cheaper to buy a cushion pad to go inside. However, if it's an unusual size, then it's just a simple to make your own cushion pad. I'll do a video to show you how to do that. And then you'll have your very own shirt cushion. But it's pad. <laughs> 